the emperor of mankind. Great rulers that manage to unite their people and lead them to glory and victory are found through both history and fiction, from Alexander the Great to Aragorn to Genghis Khan. The Emperor of Mankind in the Warhammer 40,000 universe leads perhaps a larger empire than practically anyone else, and on top of that, is worshipped as an actual god. It's hard to think of 40k without thinking about the God Emperor, and so this is a pretty good springboard to dive further into the lore of the universe. Like all of my videos, this won't be totally comprehensive, but it will provide a pretty good look at the Emperor of Mankind. The Emperor's origin is shrouded in mystery, and it's likely we'll never get a clear explanation of his creation. The earliest source on the topic is questionable at best in today's lore, so take it with a grain of salt. It was said that in the early history of humanity, on the planet Terra, there existed a number of psychers, aka psychic individuals, called shamans. The use of psychic abilities most commonly means an individual draws power from the warp, the parallel dimension of boundless chaotic energy. These shamans were benevolent people, using their powers to aid humanity, and when they died, they could use their connection to the warp to reincarnate into a new form. However, since the warp is essentially created and fueled by the emotions and thoughts of practically every living intelligent creature in the universe, as humanity drifted towards ambition, greed, and violence, the warp began to change. The warp was becoming a darker dimension, and hellish entities began forming inside of it. The shamans discovered that it was becoming more difficult to use their powers, and upon death, their souls were being devoured. They gathered together, realizing that humanity was at great risk from the growing power of the warp. After much deliberation, they decided to combine their powers into a single man that would guide and protect humanity. The shamans committed mass suicide, pooling their energies, and reincarnated into an immortal new man, the Emperor. Like I said, this is an old explanation, and plenty of fans throw this out completely, preferring the Emperor's origins to remain mysterious. It is clear that the Emperor was born around 8000 BC in Anatolia, which would be modern-day Turkey. While still a child, his father was murdered by his uncle, and while he prepared his father's body for the funeral, he received a psychic vision of the murder. He approached his uncle and used his power to stop his heart. This was apparently the moment that the Emperor realized humanity needed guidance to establish law and order. Despite this, the Emperor would not specifically rise to global leadership for many millennia, choosing instead to observe humanity, subtly influence them, and develop his abilities. The Emperor was deeply aware of the growing powers in the warp, and hoped to influence humanity towards peace so as to slow the growth of chaos. These efforts largely failed, as man inherently drifts towards ambition self-satisfaction, and defiance. The Emperor went through many identities as humanity developed, including political advisors, religious leaders, pioneering scientists, crusaders, and so on. Eventually, mankind took to the stars, and the Emperor went with them. He traveled to the planet Molik, where there existed a great portal to the realm of chaos. The ruinous powers had been created millennia ago by this point, and the Emperor stepped through the portal to meet them. It's unknown exactly what occurred during that visit, or what was said, but the Emperor supposedly obtained a measure of their power. Whether he stole it, forcibly took it, or made some bargain that he didn't follow through on, the Gods of Chaos forever labeled him as the Anathema. The Golden Age of Mankind eventually came to an end, and the Age of Strife began. For millennia, humanity was at its most divided, plagued by uncontrolled psychers, warp storms, demonic possession, robotic armies, hostile aliens, and sheer isolation from one another. 
Terra became an apocalyptic home to warring barbarians and warlords, and the Emperor finally decided that it was time to step in and lead his people. The Emperor met his chief advisor during this time, Malkador, who was the one who suggested he take on the Emperor title. The Emperor proceeded to spearhead the Unification Wars, defeating the other warlords and conquering Terra. To achieve this, the Emperor began experimenting with gene editing and enhancement techniques, creating the first super soldiers, called the Thunder Warriors. The Thunder Warriors were massive, incomparably strong, and savage, making them perfect weapons for the Unification Wars. The Emperor also took on a personal guard of soldiers that he valued above all others, called the Custodian Guard. It's said that the final battle of the Unification Wars saw the death of all the Thunder Warriors, although some say that the Emperor himself saw to it that they died, as they weren't a good fit for his plans of conquering the galaxy. Despite this, a small number of Thunder Warriors did survive the war and were rediscovered later. With Terra united, the Emperor began to prepare for his Great Crusade to conquer the galaxy and unite all of humanity under one banner. He went to the Mechanicum of Mars, the technological organization that holds the greatest collection of humanity's technical knowledge, and formed a treaty with them. The main issue was that the Emperor's ideology he was planning to spread was of logic, reason, and atheism ridding the galaxy of superstition and religion, as they have only served to divide mankind. The Mechanicum, however, worshipped a machine god of knowledge, conflicting with this ideology. The Emperor knew that his crusade would be hopeless without the technical support of the Mechanicum, however, and so he signed the treaty, allowing them a degree of autonomy in exchange for their assistance. The Mechanicum agreed to the treaty partly after witnessing the Emperor repair a machine with only a touch, believing him to be the physical manifestation of the machine god, called the Omnisaya. The Emperor then had the Mechanicum assist in creating the Astronomicon, a massive device powered by the Emperor's psychic energy that would function as a beacon during warp travel. Without this, the Great Crusade would have been practically impossible. The Emperor also continued his efforts in creating genetic super-soldiers. He had plans for legions of genetically modified soldiers that would be invaluable in his crusades, but he also wished to have a number of great generals to lead them. These generals were called the Primarchs, and the Emperor created 20 of them, using secretive genetic techniques, parts of his own DNA, and likely some part of the power of the warp he gained from the Chaos Gods. The Primarchs were created to be stronger, faster, smarter, tougher, and more charismatic than a normal human, the greatest leaders available to mankind other than the Emperor himself. The use of the warp in creating them likely resulted in making them even greater, but also would potentially leave them more open to its influence. After creating his twenty sons, the gods of Chaos managed to take them and separate them across the galaxy. The reasons for this are unknown, but the most probable reason was to sow Chaos in the future, rather than just killing them and delaying the Emperor's plans. Hoping to later find his sons, the Emperor took DNA samples that he had taken from each Primarch, and used them to create twenty legions of space marines. Not as great as the Primarchs, but more controllable and sophisticated than the Thunder Warriors. With his fleets of ships and legions of soldiers, the Emperor began his Great Crusade. The Imperium of Man began conquering planets, rediscovering territory and bringing lost allies back into the fold. The Emperor found one of his Primarchs, Horus, and began bonding with him. Horus would prove to be an incredibly capable general, and over time the Imperium would rediscover all of the lost Primarchs. Each one was placed in charge of the Legion of Space Marines created from their DNA. Two hundred years or so into the Great Crusade, the Imperium achieved a triumphant victory against the Orc Hordes in the Ulinor Sector, largely thanks to Horus. 
The Emperor believed that Horus was ready to lead the war effort in his stead, as he had bigger plans. Horus was granted the title of War Master and placed in charge of the Crusade, and the Emperor returned to Terra. Practically everyone in the Imperium, including Horus, were mystified as to why the Emperor would suddenly abandon the Crusade and return home, but the majority trusted in their Emperor and in Horus. The Emperor's secret plan, known only to a few, was the Webway Project, an effort to completely divorce the Imperium from their dependency on the warp. The Webway was a conduit created by the ancient race known as the Old Ones, and also utilized by the Eldar, that allowed for extremely fast travel across the galaxy without involving the warp. The Emperor created a portal from the Golden Throne on Terra into the Webway, and had the Mechanicum begin creating new Webway tunnels. But since they weren't created from psychically resistant material, the Emperor had to use his own psychic will to protect the tunnels from the warp. The Webway project would have been a tremendous boon to the future of humanity, but unfortunately, the Horus Heresy occurred. Horus became corrupted by the forces of chaos, acting upon his natural ambition and concerns over the Emperor's secrecy. Another Primarch, Magnus, saw a vision of his brother's fall and revolt against the Emperor. He tried to warn the Emperor by sending out an astral projection into the warp, and came across a webway tunnel that led back to Terra, unaware that it was part of the Emperor's secret project. He tried to break into the tunnel to use it as a shortcut, but failed, until a voice offered him the power to do so, and he accepted. Magnus's breach allowed the demonic forces of chaos to enter the webway and destroy it, enraging the Emperor, who banished Magnus from his presence. Since the forces of chaos told Horus that the Emperor was planning to ascend to godhood and abandon his Primarchs, he led a revolt against his father, joined by half of the forces of the Imperium. The Great Crusade ended in a complete failure, as mankind plunged into the greatest civil war they would ever know. Rather than leading the charge against the traitors, the Emperor was forced to remain on the Golden Throne in order to protect Terra from demonic invasion by way of the Webway Breach. He did spend time communicating telepathically with some of his subjects, but practically all of his focus was spent on the Golden Throne. The Horus Heresy came to an end the only way it could, really, with a battle between the Emperor and his once favored son, Horus, on Terra. Horus had begun the battle with a tremendous orbital bombardment on Terra, followed by landing his legions of space marines and marching on the Imperial Palace. Despite Horus's forces being massive, it would prove to be difficult to reach the Emperor. Those still loyal to him defended with all their might and Horus suffered heavy losses as well. Horus had hoped to storm the palace and slay the Emperor before the other loyal legions could arrive to help, but it was looking like he was running out of time. He decided instead to lower the shields on his flagship that prohibited teleportation, and invited his father to come to him. Knowing what was going to occur, the Emperor left the Golden Throne in the temporary care of his advisor, Malkador, and went to the ship. Another Primarch, Sanguinius, had arrived first and attempted to slay Horus, but failed. The Emperor arrived to see Sanguinius's corpse at the feet of Horus, and he was overwhelmed by sorrow. Horus was convinced he was doing the right thing, overthrowing a false Emperor, and believed that he had bound the Chaos Gods to his will. The Emperor knew that he wouldn't shake Horus from his corruption, and the duel began. The Emperor, tens of thousands of years old and incomparably powerful, found his match in Horus, a Primarch with the might of four Chaos Gods imbued in him. Partly due to the Emperor holding back, hoping to not kill his son, Horus managed to grievously injure the Emperor, severing the tendons in his wrist, cutting his jugular breaking several of his ribs, melting his face, breaking his back, and finally tearing off one of his arms. 
At this point, one of the custodian guard entered and tried to protect the Emperor, but Horus flayed the man alive. The Emperor then gathered his full power and shot a bolt of psychic energy through Horus' heart, ending the duel. The Emperor was very near death, and was taken to the Golden Throne where he was put on life support, forever shackling him to that spot. No longer physically leading the Imperium, the Emperor's role shifted to a psychic and spiritual one. Casting his mind into the warp, the Emperor could continue to battle the forces of Chaos, in addition to powering the Astronomicon, all while his body slowly decayed. The psychic effort of this is incredible though, even for the Emperor, and requires the daily sacrifice of a thousand psychers in order to provide him with the energy to continue. The Adeptus Astra Telepathic continually comb the galaxy for potential psychers to amplify the Astronomicon and eventually be sacrificed. The Golden Throne itself is maintained by the tech priests of the Adeptus Mechanicus, but even they might not be able to keep it functioning forever. Without the Emperor as their ruler, leadership in day-to-day -day running of the Imperium fell to the High Lords of Terra council of twelve leaders, each the head of some part of the Imperium. In part due to the Emperor's legendary status, and part due to the Emperor's role in protecting and guiding the Imperium from the Golden Throne, more and more of humanity began to worship him as a living god. In the time of the Great Crusade, worship of the Emperor as a god was a secretive activity, frowned upon by many and banned by the Emperor himself. Ironically, despite the Emperor's belief that religion only served to divide humanity, worship of him would unite much of the Imperium. In time, worship of the Emperor would become the official religion of the Imperium, and the Ecclesiarchy would be formed to maintain and promote the religion. Two notable exceptions that don't follow the Ecclesiarchy are the Adeptus Mechanicus, who worship the Emperor in their own way, and the majority of the Space Marines who revere and respect the Emperor, but don't worship him. There are those who say that the Emperor will someday be reborn and return to lead the Imperium with his physical body once again. They say that the Emperor's soul is currently residing in the warp, much like the shamans on Terra millennia ago, and is reforming into a new entity. Perhaps this is nothing more than a rumor, or perhaps the Emperor will indeed return to the Imperium during its darkest hour. The Emperor was undoubtedly a powerful individual, and an inspirational leader, but much of his history and actions have been altered to some degree by Imperial propaganda. Truth be told, he can often be seen as a warmonger, forcing compliance on the whole of humanity irrelevant of their beliefs or cultures. Regardless, trillions of humans worship and depend on the Emperor and his continued existence on his throne is vital for the Imperium's future. Him physically returning would certainly shake things up, but as is, the Emperor of Mankind is undoubtedly an iconic element of the Warhammer 40,000 universe.